Hi everyone, I am Zeta Michael from the Department of Environment and Energy Engineering. In Clean Energy and Technology class under Professor Jung, we need to present one paper each person, without further ado, I will now start my presentation. Today I will be presenting a paper titled, The Impedance Characteristics and Polarization Behavior of a Microbial Fuel Cell in Response to Short-Term Changes in Medium pH. In today's presentation I will be talking about the introduction, the objectives of this paper. Materials and Methods, Results, Discussion and Conclusions. And at the end of this presentation, I will show you guys the three quizzes I have prepared. First of all, microbial fuel cells are different from electrochemical fuel cells in that they use microbes to catalyze reactions on the anode instead of an inorganic catalyst. Also in this field, the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy coupled with equivalent circuit analysis has been used to elucidate electrochemical reactions in MFCs. Development of anode biofilms significantly decreased anodic polarization resistance, or also called as the charge transfer resistance, indicating their catalytic role in electron transfer to the anode. One important controlling parameter for MFC performance is the medium pH. It was found that acidification of the anode biofilm will affect current generation because microbial activity is inhibited in low pH. It is also demonstrated that alkaline medium and high buffer concentration enhances bioanode performance due to the increasing flux of proton shuttles out of the anode biofilm. So, in this paper, they focused on characterizing the adjustment associated with differential performance effects of pH on each electrodes, which later we can see the result of how the acidic medium enhancing cathode performance but inhibiting bioanode performance. They also characterized the performance of each electrodes and the whole cell. And that is by using a potentiostat reference 600. In this experiment, a single-chamber bottle MFC with a size of 350 milliliter, a carbon paper anode with 3.14 cm2 projected area, also a 7 cm2 air cathode which coated with platinum and has 4 PTFE diffusion layers were constructed as the reactor. A nylon membrane filter with 0.22 micrometer pores was used to cover the solution-facing side of the cathode to prevent the formation of biofilm directly on the cathode. And the silver-silver chloride reference electrode was located 5 mm from the anode electrode. The anode biofilm enrichment was conducted in 50 millimole phosphate buffered GM medium with pH of 7. The MFC was then inoculated with suspension from an electricity-producing MFC and operated with 10 millimole sodium acetate as an electron donor under 600 ohms of external resistance at 30 Celsius for 60 days for anode biofilm enrichment. Electrochemical tests were conducted upon observation of reproducible polarization behavior at a medium pH of 7, to characterize pH effects, GM media with pHs ranging from 6. 0 to 8.0 at 0.5 pH unit increments were created with 5 mole solutions of hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide. The conductivities of these media were kept uniform at 8.9 mSm per centimeter by adjusting with a 5 mole solution of sodium chloride as needed. Now, I will talk about the electrochemical analysis presented in the paper. Before each electrochemical measurement, the MFC was operated for 4 hours in the fresh medium condition, starting with a medium pH of 8.0 and decreasing incrementally to pH 6. 0. Polarization tests, the linear sweep voltammetry, and electrochemical impedance spectroscopy were performed in separate batches for each pH condition. Also, between each pH change, the MFC was operated at the initial medium pH of 7 for 12 hours. Averages and standard deviations of electrode potentials at each pH were calculated based on these replicated polarization tests. Polarization curves were created by decreasing external resistance from open circuit to 2 ohms and recording voltage after 30 minutes at each external resistance using a multimeter. Both LSV and EIS were performed using a potentiostat reference 600. For LSV, the MFC circuit was disconnected for two hours to create open circuit potential for the anode. Then, a scan rate of 0. 1 mV per second with a 1 mV step size was applied to the anode over the potential range from OCP to 0.2V, meanwhile for potentiostatic EIS, 
the bioanode was first either poised at each test potential until it produced stable current or disconnected for two hours to attain OCP. Then EIS was performed at each DC potential with the following conditions. AC potential of 10 mV RMS, initial frequency 10 to the power of 6 Hz, and final frequency 10 mHz, 10 points per decade of data acquisition. Next up is the equivalent circuit model. Bioanode 1 model as shown in figure 1 was composed of RC time constants representing two successive reactions of exoelectrogenic acetate oxidation. The constant phase element was incorporated to model a non-ideal capacitor. Impedance spectra were fitted with the bioanode 1 model by X2 minimization using ECM analyst. As mentioned before, the constant phase element was incorporated to model a non-ideal capacitor, which defined as the first equation we can see on the screen. And all the parameters are defined as follows. The theoretical potentials of the anode and cathode in a specific medium condition were calculated using the Nernst equation according to equations 1 to 4 for the tested pH range at 303 Kelvin or 30 degrees Celsius. E dot is the standard potential at 298 Kelvin, 1 bar, 1 mole, reported versus standard hydrogen electrode, R is the ideal gas constant with the value of 8.314 joules per mole, T is the temperature, Kelvin, and F is the Faraday constant. Potential values were reported with respect to AGAGCL using AGAGCL equals SHE 197 MV. And lastly, power density and current density were calculated using the apparent surface area of biofilm covered anode. Going on to the results part. First of is the polarization behavior. Figure 2 shows the averages and standard deviations of anode potential and cathode potential. Anode potential value are the circles 1 and cathode potential values are the triangle 1. Measurement was done at different external resistances in medium PHS from 6.0 to 8.0. Parameter N equals 2 based on replicated polarization tests across the entire pH range. The thick solid lines is the theoretical potentials of the anode and cathode at approximate experimental conditions where T equals 303 K. At cathode, hydrogen peroxide equals 0.01 millimole and oxygen at 0.2 atm. Meanwhile anode with acetic acid equals 10 millimole and bicarbonate equals 5 millimole. The thick broken lines equal standard potentials at 1 mole or 1 atm of chemical species except for varying pH, anode, and cathode potentials were affected by the pH over the entire tested range of 6.0 to 8.0. As pH was lowered, both the anode potential and the cathode potential increased as shown in figure 2 and table 1, this result indicates that anode performance deteriorated and cathode performance was enhanced as bulk pH decreased. The OCP was described using the Nernst equation assuming concentrations of 0.01 millimole hydrogen peroxide at the cathode and 5 millimole bicarbonate and 10 millimole acetate in the solution at the anode. These bicarbonate and acetate concentrations were the initial medium conditions, and this low hydrogen peroxide concentration provided the best fit to the cathode OCP data. The figure you see on the screen now is the LSV curves superimposed with anode polarization curves. The vertical lines are the theoretical open circuit potentials of the bioanode at a given pH. And the yellow circles representing the midpoint potential values. Potential changes per pH unit increase were 60 mV per pH for the anode and 68 mV per pH for the cathode. Open circuit voltage reached a maximum at pH 7, but maximum power density was highest at pH 6.5, both values highlighted on Table 1. Based on Table 1 and Figure 3, we can see that the maximum current density increased, and the midpoint potential decreased as pH increased. At each medium pH, maximum current density was attained when anode potential was approximately 100 mV greater than midpoint potential. Anode polarization curves superimposed on LSV curves illustrated that both methods provides comparable results, except that an anode potential range with a maximum current phase was not observed using external resistance alterations in high pH conditions. The duplicated polarization tests showed very high reproducibility of the reactor performance while subjected to the short-term pH perturbation. 
Next slide is about the result of impedance parameters of the bioanode. Figure 4 is the bioanode impedance plots at midpoint potential of minus 250, minus 300, minus 350, minus 425 and minus 450 MV in medium of pH 7. The point curves are the experimental data meanwhile the line curves are the fitted curves using the bioanode 1 equivalent circuit. The upper part, A part is the Nyquist plot and B part is the Bode plot. The bioanode, one model generated excellent fits to the impedance data as shown in figure 4. The chi-square value ranged from approximately 10 to the power of minus 4 to 10 to the power of minus 3. Fits deviated slightly from experimental data above midpoint potential due to the emergence of a third arc at the lowest frequencies as shown in figure 4. The low frequency arc and the third arc enlarged as anode potential further increased above midpoint potential, and they finally combined into a single arc. However, chi-square was still in the same order. Because the third impedance arc was not considered in the bioanode 1 model. This figure here shows the parameters values from fittings of impedance data with the equivalent circuit bioanode 1. Medium pH did not affect resistance 1, but reducing medium pH increased R2 as we can see on figure 5. At potentials below midpoint potential, R1 average value is 11.3 plus or minus 0.8 ohms, and R2 ranged from 2 to 321 fold higher than R1. From this results, it is concluded that C2 was 2 or 3 orders of magnitude larger than C1. The non-ideality constants were 0 0.80 plus minus 0. 0 0.03 for alpha 1 and 0 0.78 plus minus 0 0.08 for alpha 2. Below midpoint potential, C2 increased and C1 decreased with increasing anode potential. Also, pH and anode potential did not affect ohmic resistance because it is related to electrode resistance, medium conductivity, and proximity of the reference electrode to the working electrode, all of which were constant throughout these experiments. The presence of the third arc significantly affected fitting as indicated by the C2 surge at potentials above midpoint potential. The non-ideality constant alpha 2 fluctuated with anode potential variations, but alpha 1 did not. Over the entire potential range, the R1, R2, and non-ideality constant values are as shown. In the overall potential range, R2 was two orders of magnitude greater than R1. R2 was lowest near the midpoint potential and increased two or three orders of magnitude above midpoint potential, while R1 decreased by only a few ohms as anode potential approached midpoint potential. Acetate addition did not affect anode polarization, demonstrating that acetate was not oxidized abiotically at the anode. Based on the results obtained, following matters were discussed. Increasing anode potential lowered both the high and low frequency impedance showing that increasing anode potential facilitated the overall kinetics of exoelectrogenic electron transfer to the solid anode surface at potentials below midpoint potential. However, current did not proportionally increase with increasing anode potential above midpoint potential. R1 and R2 started to increase with increasing anode potential above midpoint potential. While R1 increased a slight amount, R2 significantly increased due to the emergence of the third arc. Either proton diffusion resistance or excessive potential might increase those resistances. Results showed that R2 was greatly affected by pH, while R1 was insensitive to pH change. And charge transfer resistance was lowest near midpoint potential at each pH condition. They mentioned that the medium pH affected midpoint potential, which has been regarded as an intrinsic constant of an anode biofilm. These results imply that proton diffusion affects midpoint potential. Last but not least, C2 was several orders of magnitude greater than C1, demonstrating higher charge storage in the low-frequency arc process than the high-frequency arc. To conclude my presentation today, I will mention some deductions that I notice from this paper. Alkaline medium and high buffer concentration enhances bioanode performance. This is due to the increasing flux of proton shuttles out of the anode biofilm. Also, increasing the pH from 7 to 9 resulted in a 42% improvement in maximum power density in a cloth electrode assembly system. 
On the other hand, low pH enhances cathodic oxygen reduction, presumably due to increased availability of protons to participate in this reaction. It was observed that a lower pH created better performance in terms of current and power density in a granular carbon cathode, and it was also observed in an upflow MFC that lower catholite pH benefited cathodic oxygen reduction. It was mentioned in this paper that maybe open-circuit EIS might not be a representative way to evaluate electrode impedance in MFCs but rather closed-circuit conditions should be used. Because anode catalysts are living microorganisms, the unavailability of an electron acceptor at open circuit might create unrepresentative impedance values. More than that, high proton availability in low electrolyte pH led to improved cathode performance, demonstrated by increasing cathodic potential. Although an acidic medium is beneficial for cathodic oxygen reduction, it decreases anodic substrate oxidation. High anode surface area, buffer concentration, or medium pH can prevent the acidification of anode biofilm because diffusion of protonated species is proportional to diffusive surface area, concentration of diffusive species, or pH gradient. Last but not least, these are the three quizzes that I have prepared. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time and attention. By the way, I also put some extra notes here for your reference. Thank you once again. Have a nice day. Thanks for your attending here late night, so see you next week.